and then having 20 affiliate faculties, we've worked together over the past year and kind of have really zeroed in on one of the major problems that we would like to influence in Nevada. Um, so um, I think there's you know, a growing consensus on this top number, but um, approximately one in 10 people um, suffer from a genetic disorder. Um, there are other um, data on this, and if you go onto the UK Thousand Genomes Project website, it actually, at eight, by age 65, one in two people may have um, a genetic disorder. So this is something that's definitely gonna be in the future of modern medicine. Um, I put together this plot of the United States here, and I plotted two things against each other. So there are 23 states designated by the NIH as being IDEA states, and these states don't have very much funding from NIH to do biomedical research. And if you notice, Nevada is one of those states. Um, I, I then went on to the American College of Clinical Genetics website and got the number of clinical geneticists per state, and those are the hatch marks. If you notice, there's a pretty good concordance um, between the two. And I think what this amounts to in the country is there's a, a growing health disparity that's about to get a hell of a lot worse. Because what it means is in these states where there's not a lot of biomedical research, there's very little genetics that is making its way into the clinic. And that's the case in this state, in fact, you know, I, I think Colleen Morris uh, sitting at this table is the only one um, in Southern Nevada besides Michael who just passed his boards and is now the next one. So we, we don't have a lot going on in the state. And this is something that Nippon wants to help uh, facilitate the growth of um, in Nevada. Um, so this will have other impacts. Besides impacting the general health and well-being um, of Nevadans, right now, um, basically, we're exporting all of these genetic health services to other states, and um, some of our external advisors are in the states we're exporting them to, um, pretty much. So um, that wasn't my choice. That just worked out that way. Um, and so the, the other thing NIPA would like to do is to influence uh, the clinical care. And so in, in coming up with a strategy to go about this, um, you know, NIPA needs to build a foundation in research and start clinical service, and we're expecting this will lead eventually to education um, in clinical genetics and jobs, but those are, uh, you know, later outcomes that um, will We'll have to ride on the first ones. So, you know, the promise of, of personalized medicine, and our keynote speaker will go into this more, so I won't dwell on it, but today there are 18,000 diagnostic tests, there are 12,000 named diseases, of, including about 7,000 rare genetic disorders, and our primary care system is supposed to take a person and through a series of first first line tests, they're supposed to you know help you solve clinical problems. But if it's a problem that is hard, um, how do you navigate this space? And I think this is one of the potential areas down the road where genetics will be able to play a really important role because if we know clinical outcomes from variants and we can test a lot of variants at once, there's the potential to help guide um, patients through the healthcare system. And so the general concept is right now we have this trial and error medicine 
and the genetics can be used to develop an informatics-driven medicine um, where we would end up reducing costs and have better outcomes. Um, so from the genomic analysis, um, basically this can help with diagnosis, prevention, and choosing optimal therapies. Now, there's a number of pretty severe barriers to making this happen in full force, and it, it should take a while for us to get there. But it doesn't mean that it, it can't be very influential today. So one of the barriers in the country, and this is why we want to have a, one outcome be education, is having trained staff. With the existing numbers of clinical geneticists in the country and genetic counselors, there's no way to handle all of the potential patients that need this type of service. Not only that, the training programs in these areas don't produce a high throughput. So there's a problem, problem there. So the, the staff is a barrier. Um, one, another barrier is doctors kind of get ingrained and having everyone all of a sudden start using genetics in their practice really isn't practical. Um, so it's, it's going to take time for, for physicians to get used to using this on a regular basis. Um, another issue is something we will get to later in the afternoon, variant interpretation and the genetics of common disease. Um, so today when you sequence someone, most of what you find hasn't been found before. And it may be in a gene that is an important gene, but we don't know if it really has an effect or not. And so this is a problem that has to be solved. And I'm going to uh, just mention a poster we have on our, uh, from my lab on chimeric mini motif decoys that we think may be able to help with this problem down the road. Another issue is regulatory. Or right now, the brakes are on um, the FDA. And um, you know this is an issue going forward, so I think it's good because we need to learn more before this gets implemented. And finally, as insurance reimbursement isn't there for this yet, we need a financial model that works um, for society. So I'd like to go over how far we got um, very quickly uh, in a year in review. So a year ago, we had our inaugural event. Um, which was, uh, we had a keynote speaker, James Lupsky. Um, we basically got the institute approved by the Board of Regents, and we deployed a website um, that we keep up to date. Um, we recruited an external advisory board that's here today, and we're looking forward to our, I think our third meeting with them, or second or third. Um, we've recruited staff and faculty. The ones in pictures here are core staff or faculty, and then um, we also have about 20 affiliate faculty from the university that are working with us and several groups and advisory boards. Um, we are working on kind of establishing partnerships as we move forward with the research and, and clinical effort. Um, one of the partnerships we joined was for policy and how people are feeling about having genetic testing, and we're working with a group called People Seek, which involves several of the major um, personalized medicine groups in the country. Um, we also are working with several at several groups at UNLV and externally in all kinds of different ways. And I just put together a quick map of um, people that some of them we don't have a formal relationship with yet, but we're getting closer. Um, we've started a seminar series. Actually, we're, since we're recruiting, we have five upcoming seminar events that you're all welcome to come to. Um, we'd like to thank uh, the governor's office again for funding us, but also um, some people who have, um, groups that have donated critical infrastructure or in-kind gifts or even supported events um, to NIPA listed here. Um, I won't go into the scientific research projects. You can, you've seen all the talks today and the posters, but we've got some good science going on. One of my impressions from the morning session was just, wow. 
And this is just great that we got this going on in a year and, and have such really beautiful signs. Um, and so I, and I just put together all the papers that this group has published in the last year, and it was 22 papers. Although I understand from last night, one of our board of advisors who has, um, they're publishing in a, in a group that's our size, much, much more probably, how big? Right. Five people. But if there are five people and you publish how many papers? 179 and two and a half years. Yeah, that's pretty good. This is what we're aspiring to get close to. It's a Jerome rather from you said that. Um, we've put out a lot of grants in here. Um, we've applied for um, about $19 million in funding. We've already gotten about $1.5 million and um, we also, I don't include any of the affiliate faculty grants in this, or um, a few of us in NIPM actually are partnering with uh, another advisory board member, Jeff Cummings of the audience, and uh, Jeff secured a uh, COBRA grant, um, and um, so uh, some of us participate in that grant, and we didn't count that either, um, but it, it inspired us, and NIPM has actually put out a COBRA grant just a few weeks ago, and um, we're hoping to uh, replicate what Jeff's been able to do at the Rubo Center. And from the clinical front, um, we hired a clinical geneticist, Michael Masiak, who ran the morning session, and um, he's been working diligently on getting a clinic up and running, and is also starting uh, research projects. So I look back at that, and I'm pretty pleased with the first year. And if we can grow a similar amount next year, um, I'll be quite happy. Um, so looking forward for 2016, um, we're kind of viewing this bottom as what our pipeline is where we're gonna take uh, patients, um, take biological samples, sequence them, analyze them on a computer, and then make the patient happy. Um, so where are we on these things? So in the first, on the bottom here, you know, we're pretty close to having our clinic up and running, and we'll be located in the beginning with uh, the practice on the UNLV campus. Okay, um, as we're also, as part of the clinical genetic service, well, I, I guess it won't be clinical, but we're going to be doing some trials in exercise with a company named Athletogen, and we're exploring other relationships at the moment that are getting closer. Um, as far as the, um, we bought a sequencer, it's here, we're setting it up right now, We've hired faculty, and we have a current search for someone to run the machine. Um, so we're building a genomics score that will not be just for UNLV, but for um, others in Nevada. Um, we've partnered with the Supercomputing Center and Switch. We've hired faculty that are all involved in genomics analysis and building and deploying a database. And we basically have these exercise and other trials going on. So that's, that's what we're hoping to get going next year. We have some milestones centered around that. Um, so moving on, I'd like to introduce someone who's already done all this and gotten it going, um, and he's our keynote speaker today, Dr. Keith Stewart from the Mayo Clinic. And um, he is the director of the Mayo Clinic Center of Personalized Medicine. He does translational and basic and clinical research on multiple myeloma. And he's um, identifying targets for therapy. He was one of America's top doctors in 2014. And all of these additional awards, grants, and research papers I won't go into uh, in more detail, so I will let it and get up here and speak because that's what we're here for. Thank you. Thank you.